All right, so in the last few videos, we saw what is a database. It's, it's nothing but a collection of data, a store that, that stores your data. How do we organize the data that is in tables, which we call it as structured information. <clears throat> and then basically we discussed how to get the data out of your database, that is by supplying simple queries. We went through some simple installation, we installed our database engine, and we installed our tool to interact with our database engine, and that's called SQL Server Management Studio. <clears throat> so in this session, what we're going to do is we're going to run through some very simple syntax, right? We're going to see what are the inbuilt things provided in SQL Server Management Studio and how can we achieve them using queries. So let me give you a walkthrough of this tool. So when you open up this tool, you basically connect to a database. Now, if you remember in a couple of slides before, we, we said that this tool can connect to um, you know, a database in London, a database in USA, a database in Australia, and so on and so forth. And here what we have done is we have connected to a database that's installed on our same machine. So if you want to install, if you want to basically connect to some other database, all you do is connect to database engine and type in that server name, right? And we won't go into too much detail of that, but we're going to just play around with our local database. So once you connect to the database, <clears throat> you get a couple of options here. You can see what all databases are present, like there are only some system databases that get pre-installed when you install your database engine. You do not have any user-created databases here. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about securities and stuff like that, server objects, link servers and stuff. So this is basically how you know where we'll get started. So we can interact with this database by supplying some queries. So the way we do it is if you click on new query, it will kind of open up a small window where you can actually type your query and those query will be run against this database engine. And to, to verify that the queries that you run are fired for this database engine only, you can see in the bottom right hand corner it, it lists local slash sql express this is an area which it shows that whatever you type in over here will be issued against this particular server okay now let's do one thing let's go ahead and create a database all right so i am going to create a database now the syntax for creating a database is create followed by the word database and then you give a database name. In this case, I'm calling my test database. Generally, multiple statements when you when you want to just when you have a couple of statements and and you want certain statements to be committed to the database, you can use the keyword called go. Now, don't pay too much attention right now on what is committing a statement, committing data, and stuff like that. So this is a general syntax. And you see that whatever is the inbuilt keywords is colored in blue. Now, these are the advantages when you use an inbuilt tool. So just imagine when you are writing this query via a command line or a notepad and, and issuing these statements to a database, you won't get these kind of support. And this is where uh, a integrated development environment or a tool that can interact with your database can really, really help you. So to execute this statement, I can go to the execute prompt, the execute button, or press F5. So as soon as the command executes, you see that it gives you a result saying command completed successfully. Now, if I refresh my databases, I will see that my test database has been created. Now, if we expand this, you will find that there are folders for tables, views, stored procedures, and stuff like that. Everything will be empty now. You won't find any tables and stuff like that because you haven't created any. Now, you don't really have to enter a query every time. And there are certain things that the tool allows you to do through a wizard. And the way you can create a database is right click and say new database. And then you can just 
say my test db2 and as soon as you click ok you'll find the database being created now what it basically did is it gave you a wizard you typed in your name and under the hood it generated a query and issued that query against this database so it's kind of just a helping layer for you to make things easy all right so once this is done i am going to create a table the way you create a table is you use the word create that is a keyword and instead of database you say table and you call you just give any table name i'm calling it as my test table and then you give what columns do you need so let's say i need a roll number column and the data type should be an integer a data type is nothing but you say that this column what value should it have and we are saying that it should just have integer values next let's say you need a column for storing the first names and you need to store characters and the max characters let's say is 50 so use var cat of 50. next let's say you need to store last name and again the var cat is 50. so we've just used some simple data types you remember we talked about in, in the other sli slide where we discussed what all things can a database store we discussed it can store text it can store integers it can store photographs in the form of binary xml and so on and so forth this is an example where you see that we are using integer columns and variable character columns now uh, if i run this query the way you can run this query is you can basically highlight what you want to run and run this query if i execute this query it shows command successfully completed successfully however if you expand my test db you will find that it doesn't have that table the reason being this command is being executed to the master database right so if you go to master you will find this table being created here but that's not what we want so you need to change the overall context of where this query needs to be executed there are two ways of doing it one is you go to this drop down and change it to my test db or you just use the word use followed by the name of the database where you want this query to be fired against so my test db by the way did you see that it gives you two options here so these are the things again that those you know the advantages of using tools so i'm going to highlight this entire thing and I'm going to run it now there are two things that happen one you see this change to my test DB because you're now saying use the context of my test DB <clears throat> now if you expand and refresh the tables you will find my test table okay all right so we saw how to create a database we saw how to create a table inside a database let's take one step further and retrieve some data out of the database the way you do it is select use the word select and then you give a list of all columns that you want to retrieve the data from in this case it's roll number first name and last name and then you say from which table do you need this i need it from my test table right and again in this case i need not use the word use my test db because my context is already used using my test db but it won't hurt to use that so let me do that if i run this i will get blank results the reason being we created a table we created a database and all those things but we never inputted any data in the table so let's go ahead and do that okay the, the general syntax <clears throat> okay before i go to inputting data to a table I wanted to show you some of the inbuilt GUI based stuff that you can play around with. To create a table, again, if you don't want to write a query, you can right click and say table and it'll kind of give you a wizard. So you can say this is my column one, the data type should be in teachers or you can choose from a list over here. Let's say column two should be something else. And then when you just save this, saving is nothing but just control S it'll actually save it as a table okay so this is how it's saved 
Now to run the query, we use the word select column names and from the table name. If you right click and say select top thousand rows, it basically generates that query for you. So a lot of things you can actually just doing by clicking, but we want to make sure that we're comfortable writing some basic queries because we're going to keep adding more and more information to this and take it to some amount of advanced querying levels. All right, let's go ahead and issue an insert statement. An insert is nothing but a SQL statement that will allow you to put some data into your table. So the way you do it is you use the word insert into and then you say your table name. In this case, it's my test table. You supply the column names, roll number, first name, and last name. And then you use the word values. Again, this is a inbuilt keyword values. Whatever is in blue is inbuilt keywords. And let's say my roll number is one, my name is Rakesh, and my last name is Gopal right insert into whatever is my table name then followed by my column names and my values now this should match one to one in the sense your roll number should be one first name should be rakesh last name should be gopal so the the placement should exactly match now if we run this particular command it'll say one row affected right now let's go ahead and see if we can select any rows again i'm highlighting that pressing f5 and now you see that the database has one row with the data that we just inserted so this is a good start right you you created a database you created a table inside the database you put some data into the database into the table and now we are retrieving it we'll go into more advanced concepts of how to retrieve data, how to retrieve complex data, how to delete a table, how to delete data, and so on and so forth.